This video is brought to you by Sayrite. Visit Sayrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Install upholstered wall panels. It's a great way to transform a plain wall into a stunning accent piece. Since they are made to your requirements, they can fit any space from headboards behind beds, living rooms, offices, and more. You can design and make an accent wall that will truly inspire. Let's get started and show you how to make your own upholstered wall panels. The first step is measuring. Upholstered wall panels typically have a height of around 12 to 15 inches and a length of 30 to 45 inches. Knowing what's typical in height and length will help you determine how many panels you need for your wall. Measure the surface area where you want the upholstered wall panels mounted. Take a height and a width measurement. If you're filling an opening like this, confirm that the measurements are the same at different locations. Now that we have those measurements, we need to determine the panel size. We'll take the overall height measurement and divide it by four. If the result is between 12 and 15 inches, then you are good with four panels. If not, change the divisor and calculate again. For example, if our height was 81 inches, dividing by four would be too much, five would be too much, but six would be perfect because it falls between our 12 inch and 16 inch measurement. The divisor that works is the number of panels that will go up the wall. The wood base that will make up the upholstered wall panel must have a gap between each wood panel when it's installed. This gap between each panel is about a half inch and allows for room of the upholstered foam and batting that will plump up each wall panel around its perimeter. You should now know how many panels are required for your accent wall's height. Ours requires four panels. The calculations for cutting the height of the wood panels differ slightly depending on the number of stacked panels, as you can see here. Our accent wall's height requires four panels, and our overall height is 61.5 inches, so we subtract 2.5 inches. And we divide that by four, resulting in the cut height of each of our four wood panels at 14.75 inches. We now know the appropriate height to cut each wood panel. It's now time to figure out the appropriate width to cut each panel. The width of each upholstered wall panel should be about 30 to no more than 45 inches. Our example is 41.5 inches, so we only need one panel along the width of our accent wall space. However, if our space were, say, 60 inches, then we would have to divide that by two, which would result in 30 inches for two wall panels along our accent wall's width. And notice that the calculations vary depending on how many panels are in a row along the width of our wall. For our project, we only have one panel in our row. So our calculation is 41.5 minus 1 equals 40.5. So we cut each of our wood panels, we have 4, to 40.5 inches for the width. This half inch gap all around the wall panel will account for the upholstered foam and batting that will plump up each wall panel around its perimeter. So they will fit perfectly, filling in all voids while still providing a great looking fit against adjacent wall panels. Now that we know the number and size of our wall panels, we need to purchase the wood. We've chosen to use a half inch OSB panel from our local lumber yard for the backer board for each of our upholstered wall panels. Various cut sizes are typically available right off the lumber yard shelves, so transporting and cutting bulky boards can be eliminated. For the mounting boards going vertical, we will use pine boards that are one by three from our local lumber yard. Each vertical row of panels requires two one by three boards. It's time to cut our wood panels to size. Wood panels can be cut with a table saw or a circular saw. Here we are using the saw's fence to cut a straight line. If you choose to use a circular saw, you should strike lines with the pencil on the wood for accurate cutting. On each side of the fireplace, we have four wall panels, so we need to cut eight of these boards to size. This is the half inch OSB panel. We will not show cutting the one by three mounting boards. They should be cut to a few inches shorter than the overall height of your accent wall. Next, we need to secure the 1x3 mounting boards to the wall. 
two mounting boards are mounted vertically about three or four inches from the edge of each vertical row of wall panels. Here we're using a stud finder to try to locate yeah, any stud. studs in the wall. And if those studs are in that location, we can uh, just screw directly into them. But that is typically not the case. So here we are measuring three inches from the wall. This is the location where each one of those one by three mounting boards will be installed. Use a level to ensure that it's straight. Then strike a line beside the board. Each row of wall panels will require two of these boards, one on the left and one on the right, so here we're repeating the process for the board on the left-hand side. We've measured down vertically to find the center of the board and marked it with a pencil. Here we will drill through the board and into the drywall, just making a pilot hole. Now drive a screw at that center location, securing that board only at the center location. Now we can drill holes at other locations, and these holes will indicate where we need to install anchors. Although we didn't mention it, this board is lined up with that line that we struck on the wall. Now for the board on the right, follow the same procedure. Middle position, install a screw. Then pre-drill locations for where you will use a screw and an anchor in your drywall. Typically, screw spacing is around 12 to 20 inches. The center screw was used only to hold the board in place while we drilled uh, location holes for where we will install anchors. So now we can remove that board via that center screw and install our anchors. You will find a variety of screw anchors at your local hardware store. Pick the right ones for your application. We are using twist and lock anchors for drywall. When we removed the mounting board, we left that screw at the center location partially screwed in. So we'll use that to locate where the board needs to be mounted over top of the anchor that we installed underneath it. And we'll line it up and screw it into place. Do not screw it all the way down until you have all of the screws for all of the anchor locations installed in your mounting board. Utilizing the line that was struck on the wall, we can ensure that we are going to uh, drive that screw into the anchor and also keep that mounting board nice and straight. When all the screws are initially at the right spot, then you can firm them down, securing the board nicely up against the wall. We will repeat that process for any other mounting boards. This is the mounting board on the left-hand side. Here's what it looks like after the mounting boards are installed in our opening. We need to pre-mount the panels for the installation of the bow clip. The OS board we have has a rough side and a fairly smooth side. We will mount the smooth side up against the wall. The rough side will receive the foam in a later step. Our wall panel is mounted above a cushion. We use some books that equal a half inch there as spacers for that location. We'll center the wall panel between our mounting boards, and in this situation, the walls. Check it to make sure it's level. To utilize the invisible bow clip, we need to drill through the panel and also the mounting board underneath it. But when we finally drill through this, we need to be assured that our panel is not going to move. So we're going to secure it with a single screw on each side at the center location of our panel, drilling into the mounting board underneath. Once that first panel is secure, we can follow that same procedure for the second panel above it. Here we're going to measure up a half inch because we want that second panel to be mounted a half inch above that first panel but it's easier to actually to use spacers. So here we have some scrap wood, and since our OSB is a half inch, it works perfectly for this application as a spacer to indicate where that second board should be mounted above the first. Once it's centered, we will drive a screw in the center of it. Here we're pre-drilling a hole to make it easier to drive that screw in. The screws used to secure each one of these panels will be removed later on. They are only temporarily used so that we can drill the holes accurately for the bow clips. We will follow the same procedure for every single one of the panels all the way up this uh, accent wall. 
After we're done securing all four panels for our application, we will then drill the holes for the bow clip. And then, after they are drilled, we can remove those screws. We didn't show it, but all of our panels are now mounted to our mounting boards. And now we are marking the center location where the mounting board rests underneath each one of our panels with a Sharpie marker. Using a level and positioning it on top of those marks we just uh, placed on the panels, we will strike a line going down the entire length of all of our panels so we know where to drill a hole for our bow clips. I like to install four bow clips in each panel. So at the corners, obviously over top of our mounting board, I like to mark about two to two and a half inches for where each hole will be drilled. Next, we need to drill the holes for the bow clip. I have a half inch drill bit here and we have found the depth and placed a uh, drill bit stop here. You could also use tape here if you don't have one of these and just tape around the bit to indicate where you want to stop drilling. The point is I don't want to go all the way through and hit my drywall. I want to go through the first board, I want to go through the board that we're using up against the wall, and I want to stop short. So I've already determined the depth that I need for the clip that we're going to be using from Sierra and the depth that will ensure that I don't touch the drywall. So now at each one of these marks I will drill a hole. Using this half inch drill bit, we will drill holes at each one of those locations, four holes in each panel. As we already discussed, if you do not have a drill stop like this that is uh, screwed onto the drill bit, you can use tape to indicate where you need to uh, stop drilling for the depth of each hole. When you're drilling with a half inch drill bit, sometimes it'll wander. Notice I'm a little bit off, so I'm not centered. That's the reason we went with a three inch board up here. So that if we wandered, we'd still hit the board. If I happen to hit one of the screws that secures this board, I would feel it right away when I'm drilling. And all I do is I just move my location to another spot. We'll follow that same procedure for the opposite side. This is the left side. Oh, there, we hit a screw. So all I'm going to do is just move down or move up. After all the holes are drilled for the bow clip, it's important to label each of the panels. Here we're labeling it one with an arrow indicating the top portion, two, three, and four, because you need to put those panels exactly back in the same spots again, otherwise they will not line up. After that's done, we can remove the temporary screw that holds each one of these panels to our mounting board. All of our panels have the holes for the bow clip, which is an invisible clip which will mount each one of the panels to the wall. Installing the bow clip is next. The holes we just made will make perfect alignment for the bow clip. We're going to discuss the bow clip next. Sarite sells what's called a bow clip, and what it does is it mates together, allowing you to install wall panels, headliner, and all kinds of applications. I'm not going to squeeze it together here because if I do, it is very difficult to remove it. But basically you have a female and a male portion that goes together and then it can be removed. It's obviously easier to remove it when you have a panel because you can grab the panel and pull it apart. Each bow clip holds about 15 pounds of pressure. The perfect screw for the bow clip is the number four screw. And if you get a close up here, you can see how it sits nice and flush in the hole into the hole that we made in the mounting board goes the female portion of the bow clip. Then we'll use those number four screws and place four screws in each of the female bow clips. This is our number one panel. This is the top side. This will be the side that has the foam and the fabric on it. So we're going to say this is the top with an arrow. This is the bottom number one bottom and it is on the right side of my fireplace. 
Labeling each panel is very important because they will not fit anywhere but where they were designed to fit. We're installing the male bow clip into each one of the holes on the smooth side that was up against the wall. This is the hole that we made when we ran into that screw. This is the second hole, so we want to ignore that hole. It won't hurt, it, hurt a thing. We'll put it in that hole. All the other holes, we only made one attempt and they all worked perfectly. Now install four of the number four screws into the male portion of the bow clip onto your wooden panel. We have not yet upholstered this, but we want to show you how it works. This is the top side, third board from the bottom, obviously the right side of the fireplace. So it would go onto this one. So you just line it up. Once the male bow clip is lined up with the female bow clip underneath, just give it a few blows with your hand and it snaps into place. Super strong. And then to pull it off, there we go. The first step in upholstering is to apply the foam and the batting to the wood panel. Okay, we have our polyurethane foam with a fabric backing, which is more like a spun bonded polyester. This is for uh, what's sometimes referred to as sew foam as well. We're going to be putting the fabric backing up against the board, and the foam side will be out, but we'll also be putting a batting over the top of it. And now we'll take our board, and we will glue it leaving a little bit of excess all around the sides because we want to cut it with a cutter so that it's exactly the same size as the board. So obviously our male cl uh, bow clips are up. Now, I love to use Foam Lock uh, 633. It is very inexpensive and it bonds very well and it's available at Sailrite. The sew foam that we're showing in this video will soon be replaced with a better sew foam called Fabric Backed Half Inch Sew Foam. It's coming soon to Sayerite. So all I do is lift my board and I spray the area. And I put a little bit on the board because you get a more permanent bond. Give it a little bit of time to set up and when it's ready, you'll be able to touch it and it'll feel tacky. There, it's starting to feel tacky. Now we'll just lay the board down. The foam can be cut a number of ways. Here we're just using scissors and carefully cutting so that the foam is flush with the edge of the board. A second way to cut it is with an electric kitchen knife. So here we'll move the board over the edge of the table so we can cut with this electric kitchen knife. Hold the knife nice and straight and run it along the edge of the board. Makes almost a perfect cut every time and it's super fast. For a beautiful plush look, we recommend adding polyester batting. So here we'll take our board with the foam on it and place it on top of our polyester batting. And we want to do this so that we have a perimeter around the edge that will wrap up and basically be flush with the top surface of the board, the surface that's facing up now. Once we have it in position, we will glue this polyester batting to the foam using the 633 foam lock again that's available from Sailrite. You give it a few seconds to a minute so that the solvents can evaporate and feel the glue to make sure it's tacky. Once it is, the two surfaces can be bonded together. Using scissors, we will cut the excess away, leaving a perimeter around the edge that will fold up and almost be flush with the top surface of our wooden panel. Follow this same procedure for all of your panels. 
It's now time to upholster the wall panels. We need to first pick a decorative fabric. You'll find thousands of fabrics that'll work great for upholstered wall panels at Sayrite.com. We've chosen to use Waverly Moonstruck Lagoon. Lay the fabric so outside surfaces are facing down. Then lay the wall panel over top of the fabric, being sure that you have excess fabric to wrap around and attach or staple to the backer board. This fabric has a weave, so if it's crooked, it will be noticeable. So when we cut the excess off, try to keep your cut line as straight as possible. You may even want to strike lines just to ensure that you cut a straight line, which makes it easier to upholster it. Begin stapling the fabric along one of the short sides. We are only tacking the fabric in place to the backer board. Notice we are holding the stapler gun at a slight angle, so the staple will be easy to pull out in a later step. Try to keep that edge of the fabric as straight as possible as you tack the fabric in place. Typically, it is tacked in place about every three inches or so. Once one short side is tacked in place, move to the opposite side. This is the opposite short side. And roll the fabric over the backer board, pulling slightly on the fabric because we want it nice and taut, but not so taut that we actually cause excessive wrinkles. Again, we are going to tack the fabric in place here. We are not going to permanently staple it yet. So again, the stapler is being held at a slight angle. So the staple goes in with one leg deep and the other leg not nearly as deep, so it's easy to pull out. Once the two short sides are tacked in place, we'll move to one of the long sides and start at the center position. Apply slight pressure, but not so much pressure that we actually warp the fabric on the top surface. When we go move to the other side, we will apply even more pressure. And again, we're only tacking the fabric in place, and we are also trying to keep the weave of the fabric nice and straight as we tack it. By tacking the fabric in place prior to permanently stapling it in place, we are assured that everything is exactly in the right spot before we apply our permanent staples, which will be to the outside of these tacked staples. By outside, I mean closer to the outer edge of our panel. You'll find a selection of pneumatic staple guns at Sayerite.com. They are very reasonably priced, and they also feature a half-inch crown. Most staple guns feature a crown that is 3 8 inch in width rather than a half-inch. The 3 8 crown works fine, but a half-inch crown being wider works better in vinyl fabric or faux leather. Why? A half-inch crown, being wider, is harder to rip or slice through vinyl fabrics, which is typically the case if uh, a fabric is pulled very taut. That's especially true in lesser quality vinyls. Now here we move to the opposite long side, and again we will start at the center location. And here we will apply a little bit more tension as we tack the fabric down. We are also working diligently to keep the weave of this fabric nice and straight. Notice when we reach each corner, we are tacking it down about an inch or two away from the corner. We will finish the corners after everything is secured. After all sides are tacked down, as it is here, inspect your top outside surface and make sure that the fabric looks good. Some fabrics have a really distinguishable weave as you can see here, and ours is going nice and straight. So we're happy with it. So now we can tack it down permanently. We will start on one of the long sides, and now we will hold the staple gun's nose horizontal to the surface, so the staple is secured in a normal fashion. Even though we have tacked the fabric in place, we can still apply tension to the fabric as we staple it down. 
Notice one hand is used to pull the fabric tighter as it is being stapled, and we are also checking to be sure the weave of the fabric is nice and straight as this is being done. Adjustments can still be made at this point, as you can see. If you apply staples that are very close to each other, this typically helps to remove the hard spots or slight puckers that sometimes occurs when staples are spaced pretty far apart from each other. So you get a smoother surface. So that side's tacked, now I move to this side. The two long sides are tacked down and it looks good. Now we'll move to the short sides and follow that same procedure. At the corners we are still about an inch away from the corners. We will do that after everything is tacked securely in place. Let's show this in double time. All four sides are permanently tacked in place and the top surface looks great. We can now remove the staples that were used to tack our fabric in place. Just use needle nose pliers for this. Since we held the staple gun at an angle, they are easy to remove. At each corner you'll have excess fabric. Simply cut it away. It'll make it easier to upholster the corners. Don't cut too much away, otherwise you will have no fabric to roll over the corner. Also, if you open up the fabric, the batting at the corner can sometimes be a little bit aggressive. In other words, there's too much batting. So here we've opened up the fabric a little bit so we can gain access to some of that batting and cut some of it away. Corners can be done in a variety of ways. Typically, all you're trying to achieve is a nice looking corner. So you can follow the approach that we're doing here or you can come up with your own approach. Whichever approach you use to finish a corner, you should definitely duplicate it on all corners so that all upholstered wall panels look the same. Finishing a corner like this is probably the easiest way to do it, and it still looks pretty good from the top surface. So that's what we're going to do here. Once we're happy with it, we can just staple it in place, and then we can move to the next corner and repeat the process. There we go. We'll follow the same procedure for all of our upholstered wall panels. After they're all done, we're ready to install them onto our wall. Our upholstered wall panels are done. Now all we need to do is line up the male portion of the bow clip with the female and then give the panels a blow with our hand until it locks into place. Remember the panels are labeled so they will only fit where they were designed to fit. So be sure you follow the markings on the back side of each one of your wall panels and snap them into position at the appropriate spots on your wall. To remove a panel, simply push your hand underneath the panel to grab the panel and pull it up. The bow clips will unsnap from each other so that you can clean panels or make modifications to anything you desire. Coming up next is the full materials list and the tools that we used, plus a list for the hardware store. Pick your decorative fabric at Sayrite. There you will also find many of the other required materials and even some of the tools that you will need. A list of common household tools is shown and the probable list of items you will need from a hardware or lumber yard. If you have questions, be sure to give us a call at Sayrite. It's your loyal patronage to Sayrite that makes these free videos available. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayrite, thanks for watching.